In just 10 minutes, you'll learn how to use FL Studio like an absolute pro and how you can speed up your sessions by 10x. If you're serious about mastering FL Studio, you need to know these tips and you need to watch till the end of this video. But before we get into it, make sure you leave a like down below, leave a comment, hit the sub button. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below and also let us know what you want to see next. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so starting out with our first tip, uh, I'm going to show you guys how you can remove vocals or a beat from like an overall song or whatever. First thing you want to do is you want to open your channel, open up a thing of Edison, and once you do that, you're going to want to drag and draw project, song, whatever that you want to either get rid of the vocals or background song. So I got my project here. I'm going to drag it in. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to right click on it. You want to go to tools, vocal, denoise, and isolator. Wait for this to analyze. Usually it takes a little bit. All right. So once it's done analyzing, what you can actually do is uh, you can move this little bar around here. So noise is going to be the beat of Let's say you put a song in there. The noise is going to be the beat. The middle here is going to be the sample regular. And then on this side at vocal, it's going to completely chop out the beat and you're only going to get the vocal. So for the next tip, I'm going to show you how you can actually go about recover a corrupted FLP file. I only learned this not too long ago and I think it's like a hella hella solid thing to know, especially if you're in a pinch or you know, you need to get some stuff out of that FLP. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to go to help diagnostics it's going to pull up this little thing here and then you're going to want to go to fix flp studio song project and then what you can do is you can actually go remove the plugin that crashed the file that was when file was saved remove a plugin that crashes when file is open and then you can see all the things that are being used within this project and then this should help you get into it and then you can kind of fool around with it and hopefully get Get your FLP back to where it was before. All right, so for my next tip, I'm going to show you how you can actually kind of figure out like the MIDI of a loop. What I like to use this for is like finding the root notes. Sometimes it's hard to find root notes of loops. So I've used this a couple of times for uh, situations like that. So what I'll do is I'll just drop a loop in here real quick. So basically what you want to do first is you want to click right here. You want to make sure you click on that little symbol there. You're going to want to go to pitch correct sample and then I'll just drag this out so you can kind of see. So this is kind of giving like uh, MIDI notes and stuff of the actual loop itself so that's great so what we want to do is we want to click this button right here send a piano roll and then if i go all here i'm going to now have a bunch of midi for what is in that loop there's a lot of notes here and if you are wanting to use this you want to make sure that you open up a new whatever say addictive keys and you're just going to want to copy paste the midi it's not going to really sound um anything like so I, I wouldn't take um, it for verbatim. However, it is very useful for uh, finding root notes and uh, that kind of stuff. It's not really, like I said, it's not really great for, you know, very complex loops and uh, melodies. But for an example, you can kind of see what's going on here. You can see like a root note here, a uh, root notes here and here and then there. I find it good for that. And it also just kind of gives you an idea of like what you're hearing Hearing. I think I think it's a cool uh, cool tool to have just for you know some simple things like that. All right, so for my next tip, I'm gonna show you uh, a super easy way to make counter melodies if you're kind of struggling with making a counter melody. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drag in a MIDI. So I got my MIDI here. So something very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all. I'm going to go Alt A. And then that's going to arpeggiate the notes that I selected. Okay. So one of the things you can do here is you can kind of play around with this and it'll, it'll kind of mess around and make different variations of the arpeggiator. What I like to do with this method is do something like this. Something like that. I mean, again, it, it can be literally anything, but you know, if you want to make it a little slower. 
right? You, so what you can do is you can use that and then you can put a lot of effects on it, you know, shaper box, looperator, that kind of stuff, you know, some reverb, some delay, and it usually comes out with something pretty solid. So if you're struggling with a counter melody, this is a really, really easy way to make one. So next I'm gonna show you some piano roll tips that I think every single producer should know. First one, if you wanna show all the notes on your uh, keyboard in the piano roll, you're gonna wanna click here, go view, go to key labels, and then do all notes. This will show all the keynote labels and it'll make it a lot easier for you to uh, make melodies and kind of build out chords and stuff like that. So instead of actually going through and clicking on all these tools, an easy way of scrolling through them and actually getting through them is right clicking and scrolling on your mouse wheel. This will uh, actually send you through all of them super easily and it saves you a couple seconds, but a couple seconds add up very, very quickly. Uh, next one, I know we've all done this before. Uh, you know, you're working on a beat and you accidentally do one of these and guess what? Control Z will do nothing for you. So what you wanna do is go here, go to view and unclick background waveform. Super easy, get rid of it never want to see it again so for all the people who have a keyboard a mini keyboard or anything that like to kind of riff and play things i know sometimes that you know you're playing something and you're like oh man that sounded really good but of course you weren't recording it so a really good way of uh, going about getting that back is you go up to tools you go to dump score log and you can go all the way up to the last 30 minutes um obviously i don't have anything but this is super super solid you know especially if you kind of played out something really cool you know you kind of thought back you're like hey i wish i had that well there's your answer super easy and it'll just have it all ready and set up for you like it was always there so one tip that i'm not sure that a lot of producers actually know but that i use personally all the time is when you're using a parametric eq sometimes you know you can use this and you can see this little area it always leaves a little bit of a kind of a corner there uh, when you're cutting out your highs and your lows so what you can actually do is if you go to the 20 hertz or the 40 hertz this will actually chop it right out and you're not going to leave any extra frequencies there so another thing you know when you're using loops and you're making a beat or you know you're using samples and you make a chop and you copy and paste and you notice something just doesn't sound right and then you figure out oh i've actually chopped it and there's this small little gap but you have this whole project already laid out and you don't really have an option of like going back and like fixing all that well there's a simple easy thing Thing that you can do so if you find where it is okay so right here right it's literally that small so if you control a select them all and then shift q okay so in order for this to work i just figured out that you actually have to have it highlighted like this or else it's not gonna work so what the all right so i don't know it, it's it seems to be super finicky for some reason like if i scroll out there we go. So I guess you just can't be fully scrolled in. I don't know. It's a little finicky. It does work. Just play around with it a little bit. Anyways, that's how you quantize. Uh, super, super helpful. And it's helped me a good couple of times. 100%. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you found some of these tips useful for yourself. If you did, make sure you leave a like and comment down below. Let me know which one you were most surprised by. I personally have used that FLP corruption tool a couple times and it actually has worked and it's been a huge lifesaver for me. So that's my favorite one personally. But yeah, let me know which one you liked the most down below. And if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, consider joining the uh, subscription down below. You get all of our FLPs, plus all of our exclusive content loops, all that kind of stuff through our Discord. Uh, if you wanna support me and the channel and keep me going, support me as a creator, that is one of the easiest ways you can do that. And I think it's only $5 a month. So definitely check that out. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.